Hey, what's going on guys? Jace Two Cents here. And if you've been to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Jace Two Cents for live gaming and stuff, I was playing World of Warships recently and then for like the hundredth time in the last few streams, uh, people noticed that I have a sensor panel showing on the bottom of my stream. And I get asked every single time, what software is that? Where can I download it? And every single time I'm like, you can't download it. It's ADA 64, you gotta make it by scratch, you know, from scratch. And we've done an introductory video to this already that Phil did uh, about a year and a half, almost two years ago, talking about how to do a sensor panel. And so we did a very kind of a high level showing you how to get ADA 64 loaded and how, how some of the stuff works. Today I'm gonna show you a little bit more in depth on how to set up some of the bars, how to set up some of the color changing aspects of it, how to size it all around and just more quickly and efficiently get your sensor panel up and running because ADA 64 can definitely be a little overwhelming, a little daunting to use because there's it's just not, it's, it's not as intuitive as you might think, but it's not as hard as you might think either. So today we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna show you how to set up your sensor panel. By the end of today's video, you should hopefully be a little bit closer to not having to ask all the time, what is that on your screen? You can start showing people, look, I made one and it's better than Jay's. EK Waterblocks is a premier leader when it comes to all things water cooling. Their lineup includes fittings, tubing, tools, radiators, fans, pumps, coolants, and of course, water blocks. The Vector 2 Series GPU blocks utilize a 10 millimeter thick copper cold plate and a 3D machined acrylic jet insert for improved flow distribution and thermal performance. Every Vector 2 water block includes a high grade aluminum back plate that encloses the entire GPU with its distinctive L-shaped profile for increased rigidity and cooling surface area. And right now, EK Waterblocks has discounted all NVIDIA 30 Series GPU blocks at 50% off making this the best time to finally upgrade the cooling of your 30 series GPU. But don't wait, this deal is only valid while supplies last. To learn more, follow the sponsored link in the description below. Okay, so if you guys haven't already seen uh, Phil's tutorial on how to create a sensor panel, I highly recommend you go and watch that. Some of this will be kind of uh, re-talking about that subject, but he goes into more detail on how to do some of the, the getting up and running, and we're not gonna talk about that today. I'm gonna show you some of the more detailed functions built into the sensor panel. So on a high level to get it going, install ADA64 Extreme, that's what we're using. I don't know what the difference is between engineer and extreme, but this is what we've got. Um, this is a pretty neat tool. It, it, there's all sorts of stuff you can control your system, uh, set up alarms and things. We'll be, I'll be doing another video actually talking about how to set up alarms in your system so you can be alerted to anything going wrong prior to it being catastrophic. But today we're gonna talk about the sensor panel. So once you've installed it, install a license, do a license version, because if you don't, it'll say trial on most of the sensors when you're uh, setting this up. And trust me, you don't want that. That's gonna be ugly. But one of the reasons why I'm doing this video is the fact that I've, I've been showing my sensor panel in my live streams so that you can see what my system is doing in terms of temperatures and load and frequencies and all that stuff while I'm gaming. So people don't have to ask me, hey, how's the, how's the system handling it? You can see the FPS and everything. So it's really, uh, it, it's a really handy tool. So to get going here, go to File, go to Preferences, and then over here on the, the main menu, you'll see Sensor Panel. Now we have to activate it. So we're gonna click Show Sensor Panel. And in terms of the size, this sensor panel size is gonna depend entirely on what size you want the window to be. Now, if you're running one of those Amazon, like Raspberry Pi screens or whatever, with HDMI plugged into your graphics card, acting as a second monitor that's only purpose is to work as a sensor panel, whether it's sitting on your desk or sitting inside your tower, looking neat, you're gonna to wanna to set this to the resolution of that panel, that way it fully fills it out. Let me explain why it's important that you do that. So as soon as I hit apply, apply, it's gonna pop up here. So if you go in here and you change your panel size, like I don't know, 1920, that's gonna be a weird vertical there. So as you can see, it does not rescale anything in there. It just leaves it tiny. And it is a lot of work to go in here and resize all this stuff. So you wanna make sure your sensor panel size is correct at the start. I really hope ADA64 one day works with a scaling function so that it can scale everything as a whole bigger. But until that day, that's what we've got to deal with. So I'm just gonna go 640 by 480. That's a very common resolution for um, the purposes of sensor panels, like the five inch panels are typically like that resolution. The other thing is if you're just gonna use this as a panel like up in the corner of your window or something, um, it, it's not gonna fill out your screen. Choose the size you want it to be that's not gonna be in your face. Okay, anyway, moving on, let's go ahead now and get some of these, these sensors set up. This is just a generic, here's some info it throws out on the screen. So if we right click this and hit sensor panel manager, this is where we can save and create new um, sensor panel layouts. So this is everything that we're seeing right here on this, this black layout. If you want to save it, you click export. 
It should be called save, but you call it export. But we'll get to that in a minute. We're just starting a new one here. We're just gonna literally highlight all of this, hit delete key. Sure you wanna delete these items, say yes. We now have a scratch item to work with here. Now, right now we need a new something, right? So let's start with maybe you have a cool background or something you wanna use. Item type. So we have sensor item, simple sensor item. These are essentially the same thing. The difference is simple sensor item will have less functionality or less customization of each of those sensor items. A static label, an image, a graph, or a gauge. So we'll start with image here. Um, what is this? That is a very close up image of a fitting. That's obviously not gonna work for us because of the fact that it pulls it in pixel for pixel. And that is much too big for that particular sensor panel. But that's how you can bring in an image if you want it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. We're just gonna work with the black background. Now the first things first is you have to figure out what is it that you want to monitor. So typically people are gonna to wanna to monitor like, I don't know, my CPU frequency. So let's start with CPU clock. And this is a simple sensor item. I'm gonna move this to sensor item. I'm gonna call it CPU clock. Now this is just gonna sort of be an average clock of all of your core clocks uh, kind of as an average, similar to how if you hit control alt delete in your system, go to performance, that's what you'll see. Um, I'm just gonna hit okay for now. So there it is, just a little bit of text going CPU clock. And it's like, that's really kind of boring, right? So now we can right click on it and we can hit modify. Now we can start moving it around and playing how we want. And this is basically just gonna be labels at this point. So we could change this, the font. You could download some cool fonts or something and you know, make it, all super neat. I have no idea what this font is. That's pretty basic. We'll just go with that. So there we go. Now we need to change the size and the colors and all that stuff. So we can double click it in the menu right here. We can change the style to white for now. So text size, I'm going to go up to like 14. I'll make it bold. There it is a little bit bigger there, but I want this to be a little bit more spread out, maybe half of the width here. So again, if we double click this, we can do total width and we can make this, well, we know it's a 480 screen. So I'm gonna go something like 230, oops, 230, just so I, Jay, you suck. 230, so that we're almost the width, but not quite. Now we can move this thing. I wish we could just click and drag, but we can't. So we have to give it an actual like position on X and Y coordinates right here. So maybe we'll go like, 30 pixels. Now, the reason why I'm spending a lot of time on this first one is once we get this going, there's gonna be a lot of copy and pasting, which will save us a lot of time. There, that'll work. Now we need to move it down, which is our Y axis. And I'm gonna make that like 30 for now. Okay, cool. So there's our CPU clock and we're running an average right now of 4.988 megahertz. Now we can change what our, our reference is if we want. So if we double click it, we could make it core clock one if we wanted. And there it is, core clock one. But now it's all smooshed together because it says CPU core clock CPU core number one clock. If we wanted, we can change the label right here and not have it say clock. And there you go, CPU core one. So just some examples of how you can modify the label. If you don't want the label to show at all, you could undo that. And then all you're gonna get is 4988 megahertz, which makes no sense at all. Now I want a neat little graph under there. I, I don't care a whole lot about just seeing the text. I'm all about visuals. So I'm now gonna do another item, a new, now we're gonna do a graph and we're gonna do CPU clock. And for now, we're just gonna hit okay. And there it is right there, it's pretty ugly. Let's go ahead and make this, um, if you right click it, by the way, you can hit modify. Let's go ahead and match it to everything above it. So let's go over here to total width, 230. Height is fine, minimum value, max value 9,000. I don't think we're gonna make it to 9,000 megahertz. So let's just go 6,000 for now. Now we need to move it. So let's do mod, or we can do move. Oh, you can actually drag it. I did that back. Uh, that's something new they've added. I'm gonna make it just a tiny bit wider. So modify, and we're gonna make it 235 wide. So now we need to make that look prettier, right? So if we right click and modify, we can start changing all sorts of things. So we'll make the graph color white, I guess. So we can take away the grid entirely if we want. Hit a, okay, see now the grid's gone. We don't really care about the grid so much, but that line, doesn't tell us much, right? That's kind of boring. So if we do modify again, we can change the frame, we can change the background, the graph thickness and all that sort of stuff. But if we now go ahead and come in here and do, instead of line graph, a area graph, 
now you can see it sort of starts to fill that in, right? And it's pretty locked right now because my computer's set to just high performance, which has the CPU sort of pegged and locked right there. But we're gonna make the color something a little bit easier on the eyes. So let's make it kind of like maybe this purple color. And then let's go ahead and do a grid. But instead of that, let's make it kind of a, I don't know, let's see what light gray. Now we don't necessarily need this text in there, the 6,000 and the zero. So I went ahead and changed the, the font to this, I don't know, I can't remember what my other font was. Some sun, whatever for now. But we can undo show scale and that will take the uh, the text out of there right now. But you have to play around with the grid to make it, you know, how you want it so that there's not, you know, a million lines in there, which I think is in your face. So something like that. Now, obviously this megahertz here, um, if you want that to be teal, you can do it that way. But here's the, the reason why we just spent so much time on getting this one going. Let's say now we want to do a GPU so we can right click and we can say copy and we can right click and say paste. Now we can click move and let's say we want this side down here to be GPU. So now we'll right click, modify, and then we will make this now our GPU uh, clock. So here's our GPU one clock, hit okay. This is my 3080 Ti that is in here right now. So now you can see it says GPU one clock 1320. Well, that's boring, GPU one clock. So we can just name this now, I don't know, RTX 3080 Ti. Same thing up here. We could make this now say 12900K. But now if we go to sensor panel, panel manager, you can see it showing right here what they are based on the label we made. So there's a 12900K CPU clock, and then there's the RTX 3080 Ti that we just added. So now we're gonna copy the CPU clock graph, and you can tell it's a graph by the icon right there. So highlight it, come down here, say duplicate, and then we can move this down by clicking the move down button. So it's right underneath this guy. And now we do need to move it. So I'm gonna say move, I'll just line this up right under here. But now we need that to actually be referencing the GPU usage. So right click, modify. Okay, so we're gonna be looking for GPU clock again, right there. That's what we're referencing now for our graph. And now you can see the clock kind of moving around right there with the area graph. So the GPU is a lot more dynamic than the CPU right now, because like I said, mine's locked to performance mode. Um, so now you can see it moving around. If you want to modify it again, you can modify the range. Max value 4,000. Well, this GPU is never gonna go above uh, what is it, like, tw one, well, I guess we can just call it 2800. It's never gonna go any higher than that. Now you can see it sort of moved everything up. Okay, so now we wanna add some memory utilization or something here. So we can right click on the CPU, say copy, right click down here again, say paste, double click on it, once we get to highlight, there we go, modify. But let's look at our memory utilization. So that'll be right here, memory utilization, boom. Now you can see it obviously is really squished because of the spacing. It will overlap itself because it's set to the same spacing as this one is up here. So again, we can modify it. We can change the label down here to say maybe something memory util. That's a little better. Right click, move, and I'm gonna set it right underneath here. And then I'm gonna copy this graph again, the same I did as I did before. Paste, and we are gonna move it underneath memory util. And then we're gonna change the item again. So modify, hit okay. Now we have to set our range once again. So max value is 100. So this is actually okay, this is just a percentage. Now one of the things I did in my particular center panel back home is I did uh, a little usage bar underneath it as well, which we can technically do with this. If I don't wanna use a graph there, I can just modify it. We can make it a sensor item instead, not a simple, but a sen standard sensor item. It's still set to memory util, and then we can set it as a bar, show bar, boom. So we just changed it to that. Now it's gonna show the label automatically, so I'm gonna go ahead and modify it to undo the label. And there we go. So now we would just have to set this up like we did the other one by setting its width, and we'll go to 50. Um, and we'll make it width here, 250, height, 25. Now we don't need that 19% showing there anymore. Value unit and undo show value. 
Okay, so memory util here is just showing a green bar because all that's happening right now is the bar is just going to change color based on its usage. But we want the bar to actually fill up, right? So let's hit modify, go to bar, and this is where some of the cool stuff is. So the minimum value can be uh, zero, and then we don't need a limit. We can talk about limits in, the, in a minute here, but we just want max as 100. Okay, so there you go. Now you can see it's red, and then you can see the background of our bar, which I still need to make wider. Why is it not matching the other one? Whatever, it doesn't matter. We'll make it 300. Cool, okay. Now let's say we want that bar to change colors um, based on how used it is. So we can go to modify, back to the bar, and then we can have limit one be, I don't know, 50%, limit two be 75%, and then limit three be 100%. Well, zero, we'll just make it match like the purpley color, because I don't know why we're doing purple theme, but whatever. 50%, we could make it then turn maybe the sort of a brighter pink color. 75%, we can maybe make it go to, I don't know, we'll just choose a random color at this point, maybe like a light blue and then limit 100, maybe just red, because if you saw 100% memory util, you, you're doing some editing or something. So there you go. See how the color is now purple? So as the bar moves up, as it hits those new thresholds, it will change color. So that way you could glance at it and see how that looks specifically based, or the color will tell you at a glance what the current state of whatever that sensor is. Now I wouldn't do that under memory util, but we could do that under say drive utilization. That way you could kind of look at it and see what your drive's uh, usages are. Now, we, I particularly like bar graphs. Um, Phil showed you how to do kind of like circle graphs that are built in, and you can change the values in the font and everything in there. Um, let me go ahead and sort of recreate the center panel that I made for my at-home setup. That way, I can then show you how each of those, those items are basically configured. That way, I'm not sitting here for two hours showing you how it took me two and a half days to set that up. Corsair brings gaming to the next level with the Xenion 45-inch flexible OLED Xenion Flex display. With up to 240Hz refresh rate, 0.03 millisecond greater gray response time, motion blur canceling, anti-reflective coating, burn-in protection, and customizable bend based on user's preference, the Xenion Flex from Corsair allows gamers to truly tailor their display to their liking. Click the link below for more details. Okay, so this is what I came up with. It's basically a kind of a recreation for the most part of what I came up with at home. You'll notice I'm just using a black background uh, and that's mostly because I find an image behind this to be really sort of distracting. Uh, unless you were to maybe have an image that had borders and stuff that were designed to sort of frame out uh, what's what's going on here. A little kind of a side tip, if you were to now take a screenshot of this and then you import this into um, Photoshop, you could then create some sort of an overlay, uh, which would go under all this that can frame it out and make it look really nice. But this looks fine for me and, and like my, the way my setup is at home. So here's what we've got. I've got my 12900K. This is the temperature of the CPU package. And then this is the current frequency. You can see I put it out of high performance mode and now it's just in balance. So you can see the clocks coming back down now. Um, here's my RAM usage. So it's labeled as RAM. This is my current, this is DDR. It says DDR5. Uh, 4800 and then you can see what our current RAM usage is right here. This right here is just a right to left. I just want to point that out. So this was kind of Phil's suggestion when I did mine is to have everything sort of come out from the middle. So the bars on the right go right, the bars on the left go left. So the light blue is actually the, uh, the filling of the bar. And then I just have a dark purple gradient for the 3D bar as the background because this is the way my color scheme is at home. Anyway, so I've got my edge temp and my hotspot temp of my GPU. Down here is the actual GPU frequency. Uh, and then we have FPS down here. And then this is technically the FPS chart. And you can see if you right click an item, by the way, it tells you what it is, right? So GPU on hotspot, if I right click that, it's memory util. If I right click that, it's CPU package power. Um, so anyway, there you go. Important note, if you want the FPS to show, you have to have RTSS installed, which is part of um, MSI Afterburner. So you can install MSI Afterburner and it needs to be running. Otherwise, it doesn't pull from anywhere. So RTSS uh, or Reva Tuner needs to be installed in order to have that work. So as we right click here, you can see RTSS FPS. Now this on the right right here, this is basically a breakdown of everything that is right here. So you can see I'm, I've got a ton of different things being um, sort of pulled here, if you will. 
So I've got my CPU power here. I like to keep an eye on my voltage and this is my power, like actual wattage. So I can keep an eye on the wattage draw. Um, so this is the CPU package power right there. And then this, as you can see, is the CPU util utilization. So this top bar is power, bottom bar is just utilization. They'll tend to parallel each other quite a bit because util and power draw are, are very closely related in terms of being kind of a linear um, gradient there. <clears throat> but GPU usage, as you can see here, um, I can see a percentage as well as a bar of util. So again, this is just stuff I like to just have, kind of have a glance at. And there's a neat thing I'm gonna show you here with util, um, which is, is very handy in the future. But anyway, here's VRAM. So you can see how much RAM is currently being used. So if you right click that, you see used video memory. And then this is just the, the actual bar graph is the same thing with just VRAM usage as a bar graph. So I, you'll see I have a lot of text and graph that are the same thing. It's just visually appealing that way to me. GPU power, this is how much power uh, in terms of wattage the GPU is pulling. And then once again, this is just a graph showing that. I just filled in the space down here as drive utilization. Now I'm gonna show you something kind of neat right here. So I'm gonna use Heaven. And when I load up Heaven and start it, you're gonna notice the FPS will start to populate and the graph will start to fill. But keep an eye on what happens here with GPU usage. And by the way, if we go File, Preferences, and then we keep Sensor Panel, the topmost window, always on top. That's how we basically set it when it's set to our Sensor Panels and such, like the actual screens. And when I load up Unigen right now, um, you'll see it stays on top, especially as we talk about it. Watch what's gonna happen here with my GPU usage. Boom, see how it went to 99% and now it's pink? Well, that's because I have it set to basically say, when something's maxed out, change the color on me. Now, this is what I started to show you earlier that probably won't make a whole lot of sense until you see it now in action. So if I bring this back up and we go here to our GPU utilization, I can now go to the bar and you can see over here on the bar, I've got it set so it's that light blue bar until it reaches 95% util and then it will change this color. So if I change this color now to, I don't know, white, now it's white. So the same thing can be done with power and all that. So you can see my GPU is currently pulling 398 watts of power. I forgot how much the 3080 Ti actually pulled in power, but there you go. 399 watts of power currently. So I have that set to not turn pink until, where is that? Where do I have it set to? So if I go to bar, oh, so I have it set at 450 watts, which is obviously quite a bit. Now let's say you wanted to make it, um, I don't know, let's make this like, 375 is our current limit. Now as you'll see it'll turn red because that's where I have it set right there. There it is, red. Red is a, a color I would probably reserve for something bad is happening. So I like to just kind of leave it as something that matches the overall theme, unless something's going really, really wrong. And I'm also gonna set that to 375, which makes sense because of the fact that I can now glance at my system and go, boom, my GPU is under full load right now. Now you'll notice as I started Heaven, the FPS stopped showing. That's because if you bring up the menu and start modifying it at all, while it's talking to RTSS, it loses that communication. So basically all I have to do at this point is just close this out. So now if I start it again, you'll be able to see the, uh, the FPS. And I feel like the FPS counter is kind of important. See, there it is. See the FPS coming up right now, 132. I feel like this is important because let's say you're playing a game and you just had like a massive stutter. It's nice because you can glance over and see the FPS drop, but you can also see on these other charts like, hey, my CPU util suddenly maxed out and my CPU clock rate maybe dropped or something. It kind of just gives you something to glance at in your system and be able to say, what is happening? So this is kind of how I set mine up. The cool thing is I, I like bars. You could use uh, gauge dials and you can do vertical bars, horizontal bars. This is, in my opinion, it just matches my theme and it's, it's easy at a glance to see what's happening. So if I go ahead and just kind of close heaven now, see how everything just kind of goes back to normal. And as soon as I close that, look at that, everything's gonna drop back to normal. And at a glance, we can see everything that's going on. So before we're done here, there's a couple things we need to do. One, it is very important that you save your work, especially if you've spent time building one of these, you know it can take a while. If we go right click sensor panel manager, we need to export this. Now I have an export I've already saved called sensor panel one, that's just for this video. Pick your location and that was loud. Yes, save it and replace it. And that's pretty much it. 
So there's not a whole lot to this. It just, it takes some time to sort of figure out the layout that you want. And if you spend some time looking around online, you'll find some really intricate layouts. Some of them are far too busy and too much stuff going on. And other ones, in my opinion, are just far too plain and, and not enough going on. So you just need to kind of find a layout that works for you. Because my system is this sort of a vaporwave color scheme, that's why I made these colors match like this. Um, but again, this is only limited kind of by your, your creativity, if you will. A couple little fun facts to point out, things that make it a little bit easier. Let's say for instance, you know, you can do the right click move if you wanted, but that's very hard to get things sort of perfectly lined up. So if you click on an item here, like drive utilization, right? That's this guy right here. You can move it with these arrows. So you can move it up and down. You probably aren't even noticing it moving Maybe a little bit. There you go. So you can move it one pixel at a time, or you can click where it says one pixel and make it five pixels, 10 pixels, 20 pixels, or back to one. So if things are just slightly off, like I can see this bar right here, my CPU util bar, um, I can see it's basically off by like one pixel. There we go. No, well, I guess it wasn't off. It's was probably, uh, an illusion, but you can get it all fine tuned this way with the one pixel rather than trying to drag and move because it's dragging and moving is not easy. So now this is where you guys need to basically sound off in the comments down below with, if you've done this, maybe, I don't know, tweet me a photo of your layout or something. There's some really cool stuff out there and you can get pretty like in depth with how deep you want to go with this, especially if you're using like, let's say like a 15 inch panel as a sensor panel, you could literally monitor anything in your systems. If I hit new, Look at the amount of things that I think if you had a big enough panel, you could literally have util for every core and just have it literally looking like the beep boop NASA control center for like the Apollo mission or something with blinking lights everywhere if you wanted, because there's so much going on. So there you go. It's pretty easy. Not that hard. Um, one thing I forgot to mention though that's important is make sure you have A to 64 set to start with your system when it turns on and that it starts minimized. Otherwise the sensor panel won't show up until A to 64 is loaded because it is built into A to 64. And then just as a side note too, A to 64 is great for a lot of things from stress testing your RAM, stress testing your GPU, kinda. Stress testing your CPU overclocks and stuff. There's alarms that could be set. We're gonna kind of do some more videos in depth with A to 64 and things that you can do to just really kind of make your system kind of foolproof and monitor everything that's going on. Again, not a sponsor. I paid for my license. It's just a piece of software I use and people always ask me about it when they see my live stream. So I thought it'd be important now to be able to just be like, really this video was for my own benefit to say, hey, click this link. Stop asking me, just click the link and you can go figure it all on your own. But you guys should also click the link that says subscribe if you haven't already because we make videos like this. That's fun and stuff. So anyways, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one.